Cool. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your time with me. I really, really appreciate that. And uh, I know HR, we're not really known as the sexy people at an Agile conference. So um, you know, I'm even more honoured uh, to have you join uh, this conversation. Thank you so much. I'm from the Agile HR community. I'm one of the co-founders. And we are on a mission uh, to change HR for the future of the work. And uh, like Pia Maria was pointing out in, our, in the keynote, sometimes the HR practices are the most limiting in our organization. So the community is all about helping HR not just understand Agile, but actually embrace the Agile mindset. And for sort of two main reasons. One is to partner with you around agile organizational transformation. So how do you build business agility in your organization and what's HR's role in that? How can we actually um, help enable that to happen? The other key thing is that HR becomes so much more powerful when they embrace an agile mindset because your people are your customer and it means you start to truly build a user-tested experience for your people. So you build a human-centric workforce and that's what it's all about. So actually it can really help, H we've got some uh, nods in the room, we can really help HR actually revolutionise their results. So I'd like to just get an idea of who in the room is HR. Yeah, all right, cool. <laughs> and who in the room would consider yourself um, sort of more pure agile or agile part of the business? Yeah, okay. And who would be an, uh, another part of the business, not HR, not, not necessarily agile? Yeah, okay, so a bit of a mix, cool. So I'm gonna do the, the talk today a lot of how I would talk to an, a HR audience because I find that a lot of um, agile peers out there, they find it quite useful to see um, how, got some, some laughing up the back, <laughs> um, how we talk about it in HR. And indeed, I was in uh, Australia recently, which is where I'm from uh, originally, and an agile coach came up to me and said, oh, his HR team keep asking me, what is agile? And I don't know what to say to them, which I thought was quite interesting. So part of this is all about how do we start to break down the barriers between the world of HR and agile. Agile, so we actually understand each other and we can really work together. Everywhere I go, we're all looking at how do we redesign how we work. And this is all due to the complexity around us, isn't it? These big themes like digitalization, disruption, the need to deliver at speed. And so many of us are trying to get this to be our organizational chart. So how do we move away from that hierarchical structure that we're so used to? And how do we start to actually connect the right people, which is what Agile is so much about. Because we know that this person is the person that does so much of the actual work. And then this person over here here is the one that knows a lot of the great answers, but we all need to connect into this person here because actually they've got the vision of where we need to go. So we're looking at this, and I think that the way that we're redesigning how we work, while Agile, Agile is increasingly the answer, it's still really emergent of what this looks like. It really looks quite different in every organization. It's so contextual. And so there's a really big kind of play or role for HR in helping you look at how do you redesign how you work. And what the big message here is for HR people is that we need to do this ourselves. So how do we embrace an Agile mindset to actually start to co-create the solution with our people rather than thinking we've got the answers because that's what it's all about. When we talk about Agile in the HR space, we talk about Agile helping us solve complex problems. And this actually I find really helps HR professionals start to see it more than just an IT kind of big, you know, big topic or the latest trend, um, hello, uh, or someone that, uh, or something that they've kind of heard elsewhere in the business. And actually, we, the business themselves are facing complex problems and only by working in an agile way can we work emergently and start to find the answers. 
And this actually really helps HR people get comfortable with the topic and start to see how they might be able to use it themselves, but also start to understand their role in agile transformation. So I'm Natal Dank, and I did spend many, many years in HR, and I was behind some of those boxes that maybe sometimes you have ticked or needed to fill in. And my kind of agile journey started when I was a global head of talent in a big bank in the Netherlands, and I was using a 25-box matrix to assess talent. Yeah, you can't go too far with your boxes. Um, so, and I kind of went, you know what? I need to get back in touch with what it means to create a great place to work. And that sort of led me on a bit of a journey or a la midlife crisis, which uh, um, always goes hand in hand. But I went out looking for what makes it a great place to work. And one of the very first clients or customers I worked for, uh, I was invited into a company you might know called Booking.com, uh, who have been agile from very much the word go, and I was asked to help them redesign performance and reward for an agile part of the organisation, so their big tech area working kind of a scaled scrum um, uh, model. And what was really interesting is that I did what a lot of HR consultants do. Uh, I went and interviewed lots of people and got their opinions of what they wanted to do. I went and looked at the engagement survey to again see what they were saying. And then I went and looked at what the really cool companies were doing, like Facebook and Google. And then I designed my beautiful plan. And I, was, I thought I was cutting edge, like I was getting rid of ratings and I was doing this, getting rid of bonuses and I was gonna do all these amazing changes that I thought was really gonna change this company for the better. And what did my sponsor say, who was the head of IT at the time? He said, well, how do you know this is going to work? And I went, oh, oh, but but this is, this is HR, you know, this is best practice. He goes, I don't like that word. Um, okay, well, this is what your people have said that they wanted. And he goes, yeah, but they don't know it yet unless you try it. Um, so you need to experiment, you need to test, and you need to show me some data as to why we should make certain decisions. So I kind of stumbled into this world of trying agile in the HR space. And what was really interesting is that I invited different teams to test different ways of doing performance. And first of all, they so wanted to be involved because this was a pain point for them and they wanted to be part of the solution, which was the first big kind of awakening for me. But the second big one was while after we had done a series of sort of tests and experiments, we went and made our first big change. And we actually removed quarter bonuses to free up the conversation um, around performance and make it less about the money and the ratings. And this was a huge change. But by the time we were there, because everyone had been involved and we had listened to feedback, we had stopped things that didn't work, but we had actually focused on things that people thought were right, they were so much part of the change. And yes, there were still debates, you know, what happens to my money in this way and that way, but everyone was involved. And I realized this was a great way to co-create people's solutions in your organization by embracing an agile way of doing it. And so for me, I realized not only does HR play a role in enabling agile ways of working across the organization, but we actually should do it ourselves because we're going to create much better solutions for our customers, which is our people. And that's kind of started my journey and, um, and led me here today. And I put my thing down. Hang on. <laughs> All right. So I thought we should find out if HR have complex problems as well. Let's just see. So can I get you to chat to someone next to you? Uh, ideally someone you don't know, but that's okay if uh, you do. And just have a chat. What are the, what's the trends that are impacting your people agenda or your HR strategy? So what, what are the trends that were the big issues that you're facing in your organization around your people agenda? So just have a quick chat and then I'll hear some of um, those. Would anyone like to share one of the problems or issues or topics that they face in their HR strategy? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, no, no. basically is there 
clash between the mindset of organizations and the mindset of new generations, mm. whereas some spec something, the other ones offer another stuff. Okay. So the, cli the clash of mindset between benefits expected yeah. and benefits offer, it's kind of complex yeah. because yeah. you need to know, like my companion said, how, what, and to what level of rotation you expect to have. Yes, yes. So the, um, I think that's a really interesting one. It's also how there's a desire for things to be more personalized now as well, isn't there? So our Netflix is personalized. Why can't our benefits and our work experience? And there's a real disconnect, I think, between what we're getting with products and what we're getting in the office. Um, so no, really good point. Um, and we've got every generation in the workforce. Um, how do you kind of uh, appeal to each one and make sure you're tapping into what they need? Yeah, great point. Anyone else want to offer any other issue that's in your HR strategy or people agenda? No? Yay. I'm not from HR, but that's from my right. point of view, <laughs> I think the, um, the challenge that we're facing now is to include the um, people the people inside the company, like the employer experience, mm -hmm. how yeah. they leave the company. I think yeah. that's the, the major thing we have ahead of us. Yeah, definitely, yeah. That kind of joined up uh, end to end, what do we think, feel and do in the workplace? Yeah, great. So this is a, a conversation I have a lot with HR professionals. We actually face really complex issues ourselves and they're often always shared, of course, with everyone that's in the organization because it's a people issue. So um, another key one is the rapidly evolving technology in the workplace. So as robots come in and AI comes in, what roles do we start to have? How does that make us feel? Do we need to reskill? How do, where do we actually go next based on the technology coming in? Then there's also this really disconnect because there can be some great technology in some part of the workplace, but actually we can still be just stuck on Excel spreadsheets and not really kind of doing anything too sexy as well. So there's this real kind of um, different experience across the organization. And we definitely talked about the multiple generations and how do we create this more personalized experience around benefits and reward and recognition and tapping into that different motivation levels that Pia Maria was talking about. Also, there's this huge world out there of instability and a lot of, um, a key part traditionally of HR was around protecting people and looking at um, people's rights and making sure that there was the right policies and these kind of things. But actually, that just constantly changes now. I live uh, actually in Scotland where we have Brexit and need I say more, uh, how do you even create any kind of sort of policy or rules around that when it's going to change every single day. And then more and more our role in supporting business agility. I uh, had a program recently where a uh, HR professional, professional came along because they had just had McKinsey's in the organization rolling out their version of a Spotify model. And now McKinsey's was leaving and everyone was turning to the HR team, oh, you need to help us do this. You need to help us keep scaling. We wanna keep going. And they were suddenly like, oh my God, I don't even know what Agile is, let alone how do I help these teams keep going? So there's a big role to play for HR professionals going forward in building business agility. So let's get into the topic itself, and uh, this is an opportunity to dive into your infographic, if you've got one. And we always separate the topic into two key areas at the community. And we run, um, basically we run a lot of learning programs for HR professionals to help them understand Agile and then start to translate it into their world. And we just actually did one in Barcelona on Monday and Tuesday, which was um, lots and lots of fun. So we divide the topic into two areas. And we use all the same words, so it's not too confusing. And the first is Agile for HR. So this is about HR teams and HR professionals truly embracing the Agile mindset. So what is it about? And how do I translate it to my world? So we try and talk, we actually try and talk about Agile in a very non-IT way and really, really 
relate it to a business world environment and help them start to see how they could actually use it in their own teams and actually how they work with the rest of the business. This is starting to change the HR operative model, which really excites me. So hopefully we're moving away from these siloed HR teams and these single uh, HR business partners that can't actually really help the wider organization solve the big problems. And we're starting to see multidiscipline teams with the business, not just HR, starting to build much more of an end-to-end -end people experience, which is what it's all about. The other one is HR for Agile, and this is all about HR's role in organisational transformation. How do we partner with people in this conference to actually build the organisations of the future? But in particular, how do we start to redesign HR practices and people practices to support this? So if we are seeing conflicts between traditional ways of doing performance management and collaborative teams and agile ways of working, how do you start to redesign it? How do you use agile techniques to actually co-create the solution? Because one of the big dangers is I do find that HR teams can run in to the solution. So there was quite a few examples of organizations that got quite excited about removing performance ratings. And they, they got rid of them and they did it in a big bang style. Some of those organizations a few years ago brought them back in which for me is the, the biggest mistake. So how do we build the right solutions and do it step by step, incrementally, so we can actually have a lasting change? Uh, and that's what it's really all about. So to do that, I'm going to use the infographic for agile people in the room. Some of this is not going to be new because it's about HR teams embracing agile mindset and ways of working, which you're going to be really familiar with. But it might be new to hear about how HR teams are using it to de design solutions and how they're working. Uh, the infographic was designed uh, by Rena Hellstrom and myself from the Agile HR community, but with Mia Colmaden, who does these infographics, you might be familiar with them. You can go on to Dandy People, and she does a whole series on all different parts of Agile, and they're, they're really cool, and lots of people use it for their trainings, and um, they're, they're fantastic. Okay, so let's um, get into it. So we're going to start with Agile for HR. This was about Agile teams embracing the mindset and actually changing their ways of working by embracing Agile. And first and foremost, it is the mindset, isn't it? So what does this mean? So incrementally delivering value to your customer, putting your customer at the heart of what you do and using a test and learn approach to actually co-create the change around the organization. The value of the customer centricity of Agile, as I said earlier, can make HR teams become much more human centric because they actually have to build a solution that is user tested by the people of the organization. So when your customer is your people, you start to truly build um, solutions for them. This is very different to how HR has actually traditionally worked. We've often thought we had the solution or we've actually introduced a whole kind of framework or maybe a whole tech solution and we've often rolled it out across the organization as the way to now do performance or the way to now do feedback. This is much more incremental. So how do we even spend time just finding out what is the pain points for people, doing a lot more discovery work, and then prototyping uh, and testing things before we go anywhere near actually committing into doing a big organizational change. And I'll talk about a few examples soon. The other key thing is the feedback loop, you know, at the personal level, the team level, and the organizational level. As the champions of the people and the champions going forward of, of transformation, how does HR play a key role in enabling that feedback loop across the business? And in HR, we often have talked about wanting to have build learning organizations, so organizations that keep learning and keep improving. And of course, Agile gives us that. So there's a real kind of crossover between a lot of um, sort of theory and ideas that's been around in organizational development uh, space for a long time with agile mindset. So it's sort of bringing those two worlds together. 
But as we know, Agile Mindset is so much more than the things that are visible, the post-it notes and the, the ping pong tables. So it's also helping uh, HR people really kind of unlearn a lot of old, old ways of working. We, HR has processes and systems have come a lot from a more tailorist background. So this more top-down command and control way of doing processes and systems. And it takes a while to actually unpick a lot of that and look at how do you actually build them directly with the people in the organisation. The next one, of course, is HR teams embracing agile ways of working and looking at how they start to evolve their actual operative model. So this is quite interesting. And this is where, sorry for agile purists in the room, um, we actually kind of talk about finding your own agile HR flavor. So we don't just do a scrum. Uh, often people are actually finding that Kanban suits HR more because there's, there's actually this mixture of design and solution as well as this constant kind of business as usual and delivery. And what's starting to happen is a bit of a combination of both. The because there's no one way and there's lots of different kind of uh, flavors, what I'm finding is it's about helping HR people understand the mindset first and then give a framework a go and then start to actually iterate a way of working from there. And in particular, um, there's three key kind of commonalities that come out across all of them, which you'd be familiar with if you're from Agile, is of course a new uh, cadence. So traditionally, HR processes, um, as well as, say, finance and a few others, were run on an, ad, um, an annual process. So we often had annual performance reviews. We had an annual career discussion. We had an annual review of things. And this is saying, OK, not only is the business cycle changing, but actually we need to be tapping much more into when and how are we delivering value. So we're actually seeing HR teams doing things like bringing uh, user stories to a, uh, a quarterly session and then mapping out the must-haves, should-haves, could-haves, won't-haves of what could be delivered that actual uh, quarter and then using usually weekly cycles to actually look at what they're delivering. They might even then say, okay, this particular topic is such a big problem for the business. Let's go and create a kind of temporary sprint uh, or scrum team around this. And they might just sprint for a couple of weeks and it might just have one HR person as well as a few business people. And they'll actually go and solve and co-create a solution together around that and then pull back and then the rest of the team keep working generally with all their business as usual and their operations up on a Kanban. So you're seeing quite a different kind of way that you might see it in other parts of the business, particularly with this need to kind of bring in people from different parts um, of the wider organisation. The other key thing is ruthless prioritization. So HR used to be full, or always still is, is full of these huge topics like develop leaders of the future for roles we don't know about yet, um, develop growth mindset throughout the organization, develop organizational transformation uh, for agile. So really massive, sometimes quite vague, quite hard to quantify topics. And so one of the big things that Agile is doing for HR is starting to get them to think about, well, what is the value I am delivering at any one time in these huge topics? And so it's something like developing growth mindset. It could be everything from being correct, connected to career development, to actually changing the performance management structure, changing reward, developing leaders. So where do you start? And what is it gonna look like? And what would you actually deliver next week and the week after that? Another key thing is you're not necessarily releasing all the time because a lot of these things are slower moving changes or also you don't want to impact the business constantly. So there's also a look, a kind of understanding of when to actually work on things for a period of time and then release and do the change into the business. The other thing is the T-shaped uh, concept coming into HR. For people that didn't work in HR previously, we were actually some of the most siloed area of the business. So I used to look after 
talent and then someone next to me would look after leadership and the other person would look after recruitment. And we were these massive topics with one single topic owner. And always, whenever you did a project, you'd all have to kind of have these big, long operational meetings to try and get things done. So this is saying, okay, complex problems, we all need to be in there together, and we actually need to solve it with the business, ideally, to get to the solution. So it really is starting to change the way that HR work in the organisations that are in starting to embrace this. The next one links very much into what I was talking about earlier, which is this idea of co-creating change. And for me, this is why I embraced Agile and I never wanted to look back. And it does pull on a lot of other concepts out there, such as design thinking, and it's in particular looking at how do you really get into the user experience of work and start to actually co-create a solution with your people. A nice example of this is a really big media company uh, in the UK. Had a, they were doing lots of management development programs. So they were doing big two-day programs and they were inviting all their managers to come along and no one wanted to go. Sure, people wanted to learn, but they thought that they never had time to, to do the learning. So they went, okay, well, let's go and really find out about what's happening for our managers and why, why, you know, what are their pain points, when might they need to learn? And what they found was that managers don't have time for learning until they have a really difficult conversation the next day. So if they need to give someone some feedback that's maybe more critical or perhaps they even need to let someone go or they need to uh, actually find someone new for their team, suddenly they really want to learn, but they want to learn at that time, and they wanted to access sort of on-demand learning, so they wanted to talk to someone. They maybe wanted to watch a video. They maybe would go to a little kind of 90-minute kind of workshop, but, but nothing else. And they also, they talked about these things as pain points, and they used really different language to what HR often did. So it wasn't about developing skills and competencies or feed, you know, um, effective communication. It was more about, oh, I, you know, I need to solve this particular problem in this particular way. And so what the team found out, and through lots of different prototyping testing, is actually if they could have this learning available when the manager actually wanted to access it, they could actually revolutionize the engagement with learning. And they even were doing things like testing it to the main HR system. So you might be familiar with something called Workday. And so suddenly a little notification pops up. Okay, this is happening for you tomorrow. Would you like to learn? And suddenly the, the manager's like, yes, please. I don't know actually how to do this conversation. So it was a really interesting example of how by stepping much more into the user experience of what was happening, you could totally reframe how to do the learning for managers. And their engagement with the actual learning programs that were created were um, you know, two times what was happening before. So, um, so this idea of co-creating a change rather than implementing it onto people and truly testing even just the language that you're using. Often HR, we can use quite flowery, um, you know, HR speak, and uh, how do we break that down and make it much more real? Connected to that is definitely being much more evidence-based. So this is about HR thinking like a scientist. The world of people practices and look, I know this happens in other parts of the business, um, but there's a lot of assumptions in the people part of the business of what people need. And everyone has an opinion on how to do performance or how to do learning or what my career should look like. And a lot of these assumptions actually go and do a sort of a lead to a whole project in HR. So, I'm sorry, just look. Um, a lot of times, I was talking to someone yesterday, and they said, oh, our CEO has decided that we need a new reward package, that he doesn't like the way we're rewarding people. So I've said, oh, should we go and do some testing and find out what they need to do? Oh, no, no, we'll just have a meeting and we can decide a new system and then roll it out. So sometimes it's not even coming from the HR space of this kind of idea and assumption of how to actually deliver the projects. And this also helps 
HR start to be much more business credible? So how do they come to the seat of the table with some data to actually validate how, why and how you might do an organisational change? So it's tapping into all the things that you're doing in the business of how you demonstrate how you make decisions and bring it into the people space to drive much more kind of sustainable and real culture change. And then finally, it is this incremental delivery of value. In HR, I know it seems quite obvious for agile people in the room, but this is quite transformative because we have in the past used a lot of best practice working. Um, so for, I worked in HR for a long time and it was actually part of my profession and when I went and learnt at things like universities and professional bodies that I should follow set processes that were already there and then I should see what the best practice companies were doing, and I should look at how I could bring that into my company. Now, in Agile, we know that that's actually just, you know, you're already behind, and actually, how do you know it's going to work for this organization? So this is a whole new world of how HR really think about incrementally and consistently delivering that value throughout the organization. It's also the end of the one big, one size fits all on organizational change or HR solution. So earlier I talked about my story at booking.com and we tested different things around feedback and reward. One of the things I did is I gave one team a feedback app. So I thought, oh, they're, you know, they're techies, they're gonna love having this app to help them give feedback. And they hated it, they absolutely hated it. And they said, we don't need a feedback app, we just need a trusted environment where we can give in and receive feedback with each other. Um, so let's focus on the real stuff. In the past, I potentially would have rolled that out across the whole organization as the solution of how to do feedback and actually presented it as a new way of doing performance management. So this is how does HR step away from that and actually there might be a good new app, but let's go and actually test it in one part of the business and validate and then move it out. Another business has found that what might work in one area for performance, for example tech, doesn't actually then work for customer service, for example. So they have started to realize that you actually need to create different solutions of how you might do performance and reward across the organization based on how you're working and what's right for you. Cool, so that is the Agile for HR. So this is, that was Agile teams embracing an Agile mindset and starting to change their ways of working. We're now going into HR for Agile, and I'll just quickly check time. Okay, and we need to have some questions. So I um, will dive into this one. So this is about HR's role partnering with you around building business agility. And first of all, it's definitely how do we work around building customer-centric organizations? So Agile's great at a team-based model, but what if you need multiple teams working together to deliver out that customer journey? There's a really interesting uh, bank in the UK that started to do a big agile transformation around building customer journeys end-to-end um, -to, -end to deliver a product in an agile way through to their customer. They've now brought that into the HR space. And so they're building end-to-end -end colleague journeys or employee journeys around things like uh, travel and expenses just as much as career development. So these concepts of value streams can work in lots of different ways throughout the organization. Also, how does HR know how to hire things like scrum masters and product donors? How do we actually build agile capability? And how do we help for that alignment of vision and purpose, but still really aim for that autonomy at that team level? Which of course is the big kind of tension that we're constantly dealing with in agile transformation. It's then also, um, for a long time, HR have often even been tasked with what we call agile, oh, sorry, organizational design. So how do you start to build teams in an organization? How do you structure teams? How do you connect and coordinate? How do you build governance? And this, of course, is a whole new space when we turn to agile. And there's no one operative model now, particularly even in one organization. And it's not about HR, Thank you. I've got a 10 minutes, everybody. Um, that's good. We've still got time for questions. I was actually thought I had less time. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so it's not about HR necessarily becoming experts of the Spotify model that's not a model and they don't use it anymore but everyone else does, um, or SAFE or Scrum at Scale, but it's helping leaders and teams make decisions around how they build the right model for their value and their culture. How do we build emergent transformation? Because the big danger here is even some consultancies are coming in and they are rolling out these models as the way to do agile. And it's often they're done in a very waterfall way. So how do we actually challenge and ask the right questions and build a model that's right for our organization? And then definitely, if we're going to co-create solutions and we're going to start to redesign HR services, it's about doing it in an agile way. So, yes, I'm the first person to say that there's a lot of HR processes and systems that actually can become blockers to business agility. But you actually need to find out what's going to be the solution for your organization. So, for example, I know an organization in France that they have brought in the SAFE model and they've done a big organizational transformation with Agile and it's been going for a couple of years now. There's now a lot of um, tension around how they do performance and there's a lot of debate of how they start to change it. However, the board of directors and on there is the owners of the company, they believe in pay for performance at the moment. So they want a bonus structure. So actually, how do you transform that environment? You're not going to actually jump to a collective reward straight away. You would need to start to influence. You would need to connect performance perhaps more to team and collaboration or maybe try and de-link reward and performance as a starting point um, and have it focused on other things. So this is about being really contextual and understanding how to do it for your own organization and take your leaders on the journey as well. And HR work in constraints. So that's why we've got the little box. So there's compliance and there's regulation, there's workers' councils, and we need to definitely work with all these groups and make sure we're actually meeting all these constraints. But the big message is we don't lead with the constraints. So too often we did build maybe a performance management process that was all about ticking boxes and approvals because we wanted to meet a compliance need. Let's get rid of that, let's design it for the user experience, and let's just make sure we're meeting our compliance needs through the, um, through the ways that we're working. And I've just I put Kenefin up here because this actually is really useful for HR people to understand the world of Agile. And if you, if you think about it, if for people that would be familiar with this model, and I imagine a lot of Agile people in the room are, is that a lot of HR work has, has defaulted to more the simple and obvious, so checklists and procedures, or the kind of nice complicated process, don't we? So HR loves a nice kind of convoluted process. And that's okay in certain situations, is okay, maybe something went wrong with the payroll payment and we then go and find out what happened and we reverse it. Or in the complicated space, there might be, we've got so much money at the end of the year and we, we want to divvy it out over our people, some expertise and analysis, we're only ever going to have so, many, so much money that particular year and we, can, um, we divvy it out. But more and more and more, everything is sitting in that complex space. Culture change, behaviour change, agile organisational transformation and the only way to solve it is to work emergently. So we use Kinefin a lot to help HR people understand where to start with Agile and, and why it's so important in our modern working environment. And then finally, the modern Agile. So I find that this model resonates with everything HR actually should be all about, which is make our people awesome, deliver continuous value, experiment to learn, and build psychological safety throughout our organization. It's so essential if we're going to build agile transformation, we need to actually help people feel safe and trust the environment in which they're operating. And I know it's been big in the agile world for quite a while, but for HR, when they work out, they can actually use agile to manage their hippos, it's transformed. So the highest paid person's opinion 
often leads a lot of HR projects. I know when I worked, I often had the CEO saying, oh, we need to do a training on this because this team's not working well together. Where actually, if you delved into it, there was a lot of other reasons. It wasn't actually skills of why that might be happening. So this is about getting the data and managing the hippos and actually building a workplace that the people that work there really want, not what we think they need. Let's do some questions. I think we've got a couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, five. He's giving us five. Cool. Who would like to ask a question? Or you can go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hello. Well, thank you very much for your presentation. I really like it a lot. So I, I work in a pharma company. I'm from the yeah pharma company. So imagine a regulated. Uh, company, I work in the IT side, yep. and I'm trying to build like this side of transformation. So I'm like uh, giving some training to people. I have like identified like different managers, like trying to solve their problems. But I would like to get HR on board on this. So I I think that every transformation, also agile, is about people. So so we agree on that. What is the key point? What are the pain points on? HR, so I can get them on board to on this agile transformation. Um, so I don't. Well, there's a couple of things. One, often HR is not invited to the transformation, and so my big message is that HR should be on the transformation team, um, and because they've got some great knowledge around how to do these people practices that sometimes isn't tapped into, and it's sort of left behind. So I reckon inviting them and they might just be really excited to be part of it. The other key thing is if they can see it as a, a pain point for that part of the business, and it's actually, they've been getting feedback around that. So if it's already coming through in, you know, in your pulse surveys, your engagement surveys, or there's a lot of talk around the need to start to change this, they'll know. Um, and and the, the opportunity to work with the business to solve it usually gets HR super excited. So um, yeah, go and invite them. I reckon they'll want to do it. Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, from the employee journey perspective, uh, perspective you have talked and that you have implemented, what's the one you feel most proud of that changed the organizational culture and perspective? Um, the question was, what's something that I personally felt most proud about in terms of changing the culture and perspective of, a, of an organization? Um, so, I, I, I don't know, is this bad if I say actually it's when I've, so I've worked with a lot of HR teams to change the ways that they work and that has actually made me most proud when I see whole organisations just working differently because the HR team is now integrated in the business and building that much more end-to-end -end experience. Um, there's a company in the UK where the HR team believe that everything that's in the experience, so from facilities, you know, the workplace around us, through to um, your computer, your tech, through to things like career development, uh, inclusion, those kind of things, all sit in the people space. And they have built, um, so they run that system where they have... Um, a, a Kanban with their uh, user stories that are validated across the organization, and then they, uh, they prioritize what's the most important things. And then they actually run short sprints where it's only a few people from HR and a, the rest are from the business to go and design and deliver the solutions. And they do everything from building new onboarding experiences through to building div new diversity and inclusion kind of situations. This company is a tech organization that doesn't pay that high, but is seen as one of the best places to work. And people, they have a really high level of engagement. Their glass door is 4.9 out of 5. And they, the competitors are people like Google, um, but they keep their people because people are so proud to work there. So for me, it's actually this whole kind of combination of if a HR team can really transform in this way, they start to build an organization that is truly a great place to work. Um, but in terms of employment, Employee journeys, I would say 
uh, it's exactly that, is that, so we do a lot of work where um, even something like uh, reward isn't just, shouldn't just be responsible by HR. You should have everyone in the room building out the solution with you. Um, and so when you start to truly co-create that that change with different people from the business, you actually see a really different end-to-end -end experience. Um, but it does mean that HR doesn't exist like it used to, so uh, which I don't think is a bad thing. So, you know, facilities, IT, finance, perhaps we should all be in the teams together building out the employee experience of an organisation. So it's quite a convoluted answer. So, <laughs> any other questions? Okay, we got one more. One thing that you said caught uh, my my mind. You said like, if I understood yeah. properly, you said that you start by making people understand the mindset, mm -hmm. and I found myself that was the most difficult thing to do. Yeah. So I'm interested in knowing how you do it. Okay. okay. So the question was. Um, uh, I said, oh, start, we start with the mindset. And I, um, I start with it as the theme of this is what Agile is all about, you know, understanding the, the mindset and truly embracing that concept. Um, but there's definitely no, no one way of getting people to change their mindset. And I, I think particularly with Agile Transformation, we do a lot of debating about, oh, should we spend a, a year just training people on mindset before we actually do any structural changes? And actually, no, because I think with Agile, you've got to experience it to truly start to understand how it can benefit you and you start to see the benefits. So they go both hand in hand. And I think there's definitely things you can do, which is, of course, the feedback loops, the bringing out the conversations, of, you know, what did you learn? What did you do differently? What was it like to get that wrong? How could we learn from that? Helps keep building the mindset, but everyone travels really differently, and I think that you can't force a mindset change. You just need to keep creating opportunities that people can have experiences to reflect from. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm gonna get we're going to get chucked out. So thank you so much. It was lovely to have you all here, and see you later. <laughs>